Hello everyone, welcome to the Talent Tech. This is part two for uh, API automation testing videos. So in this video, we will include uh, how to do the post and get request and how to test them. So we will show you Swagger. In Swagger, we're going to show you how to do the get and post manually. And we're also going to talk about how the requirements are written in the Swagger by the product people. We're also going to be demonstrating uh, how to do the uh, manual testing uh, using the postman for post and get method and then we're also going to show you how to do the automation of post and get in postman so those are the four or five things we're going to be covering in this video so in my previous video I told you guys go ahead and download the postman through the, uh, through the Google Chrome it's an add-on so if you haven't done that please do it now because we need to we're going to be using it right now so uh, to do the API testing we do need to have an API so in your company of course you're going to have an API for our testing purposes, we're going to use this jar as an API. So pretty much right, I have no API right now. So that's why I'm going to use this jar as my API. So let's look at the Swagger EY. So this side is now, it's not a, it's not a valid set because nothing is running. No API has been, uh, no API is running in our machines. We're going to go ahead and do uh, run the API from the jar file. So this jar is in my desktop. So we're going to navigate to the desktop, cd to the desktop. And then we're going to open this jar. So this, it's a jar file, which means we already know that this is a Java file, right? So we're going to write Java space hyphen jar, and then name of the file, which is tal tap, and then uh, enter it, right? So it's going to go ahead and um, run, this, uh, run this file for me, which has all the API. It's gonna take like a couple seconds, so let's wait. Okay, so it says it started the application, right? So we're gonna go ahead and uh, open the refresh this browser again. Let's see if the API has been actually uh, running in our machine. Oh, it is running. So we're going to be using uh, Landlords as an example. So where, where you can see that we have all the requests, right? So you have a get, you have post, you have put, you have delete, you have get. You have all those four methods that we talked about in our previous, uh, previous video, right? So today in, uh, in today's demonstration, we're going to be taking care of these two methods, right? Which is a get and post. We're going to show you how to do that testing in Swagger itself and how to do it through the uh, API, uh, through the Postman, right? Manually as well as automation. So let's go ahead and do, uh, let's learn, if, uh, let's look at the Swagger documentation first, right? So you can find it about the Swagger and online, just go ahead and learn. It's a tool that you can go ahead and also do the manual testing. So post is pretty much like, as you say, like it's gonna create and new landlords, right? So here it says that uh, if you look at the, model is going to say like you know the landlords uh, to do the post it, need, it require like three things like which is the first name last name and the trusted okay and trusted it's a boolean so it's an optional right matter of fact like they are putting everything in optional but i don't think everything is an optional right right so you're going to go ahead and click right here and you're going to type like first name son and the last name is text okay and now we're going to go ahead and try it out if it's working, then you're supposed to get two one as a response code. That means uh, the new entity or new uh, new record has been created or new landlord has been created successfully, right? So we're gonna say try it out. Okay. So here's the response body. So as a tester, you need to verify the response code, and you also look at the response body. Make sure you do see your first name and last name, and it generate the ID for you, which is a unique ID. So you also need to verify if this is the uh, if this is the correct ID that has been generated, right? So uh, in the requirements, you're gonna have this as well inside the Swagger. Like once you create a uh, once you create a new post, you're supposed to see this type of format of the message in your response body. So your your job is to verify that as well. Make sure all the fields are not blank, or if this is in a string, you have to verify this. If this is a boolean you need to verify that so those are like schema testing right and then the major one is like you need to see the correct response code right so uh now we're gonna do a get so since we created one now we're gonna do a get so inside the get is going to retrieve all the landlords that has been created inside this uh, AP endpoint which is a landlord and then uh it's going to retrieve all of them and also it's going to give us 200 as a response code so let's try it out 
and here is it so we have the list of the landlord so we have only one right now as of right now and as you can see it's an array so you know it's a list right and then response code is 200 so that's how you test inside the sorter like we have done post we have done get right all right cool so now let's go back to the postman let's create a new project so click uh, new for just click this icon so it's gonna create a new collection so we're gonna name it call uh, API uh, talent tag API talent tag API okay so this is my main project <coughs> under this project I'm gonna go ahead and create a new get request okay because uh, remember the uh, one entity you created so we're gonna see if we can retract this guy uh, this data uh, like her son we, we can uh, we can uh, retract this custom landlord using our uh, postman. So go ahead and uh, save this. So we're gonna save it under talent tag API, right? Save it. Now, as you see, it's a blank test. So we're gonna go ahead and click edit, and we're gonna say like you know get all landlords landlords test. Okay. So we're gonna this is going to return all the landlords right and we need to verify whether it is a 200 or not so to uh <coughs> so for the get you just need to pass the uri right uh enter the request url so we're going to go ahead and uh copy the url so right now since i'm running the api through my local machine so this is the url that i'm going to be using slash the landlords landlords right so we're going to save it again and we're going to run it and as you can see that this one has been executed uh, uh, like this is the body that we also got the same response that Swagger also gave us uh, if you look at it like the ID is LD4 and here it is LD4 and test Hassan test whatever it is so whatever we have done into the Swagger it has been done here so now let's create a post right so you what you can do like I usually do this I take a shortcut I duplicate this one right and I rename it Go ahead and add it and rename it. So create a new landlord. Create a new landlord. Okay, landlord. So this is uh, when I copied it, it was a get. So pretty much like once you create it, it's a put, right? So it's a post, I mean. So we're gonna do a post, right? We're gonna save it. Now, post, uh, if you run it right now, it's not gonna do uh, much anything. Like it says 415 uh, unsupported media type, which is an invalid. Like, something is wrong with this request right so post does require a uh, you need to pass some uh, values inside the body so like which is this which is this one right so we're gonna go ahead and copy this guy and then we're gonna pass it inside the body so go back to the body body right here click on uh, raw right and what are the type like what are the content type remember in the first place we talked about uh, the type so look at the content type it says response content type has to be application slash json right and then parameter content type is application plus json when you receiving it is also a, a json file if you look at the file okay, json format right so we're going to go ahead and do that in our postman so those are the requirements right so we're going to set draw and then you see right here as the default it says text we're going to change it to the application json or you can do the through here uh headers you see, uh, I added it from the body and it's automatically came to the headers, right? So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and place the value right here. So now we're gonna create another landlord. So let's say uh, QA automation, API automation. So this is a new landlord we're gonna be creating through the postman. So we're gonna go ahead and execute this one, execute this test case. Now it says two one created and new landlord has been created. Now let's go ahead and cross check whether it has been created or not through the swagger. So we're gonna go ahead and do the get request. So now we initially we had only one because we this is the one we created through the swagger. Now we created one through the postman. So that should be here as well when you do the get request, right? So let's go ahead and click on try it out. And as you can see, it's the array list and it gave us two landlords. One is a Hassan and last name is a test. Second one is a QA and the last name is APA automation. Now let's do the get in postman as well to see if I see two records. So go ahead and do that. And I do see the same thing. So, and its status is 200. So that's how you do your get and post in the swagger as well as in uh, postman. Okay, now since we did the get, so this is manual testing, right? 
So you need to go ahead and open the postman during the release or sanity check or regression test, whatever. You need to go ahead and manually execute one by one and look at the response code. Oh, make sure it's a JSON. Oh, make sure my status is 200 for the get and uh, 300, uh, 211 for my, uh, for my, uh, for my uh, post method, right? So we're not going to do that. We're not going to take that headache anymore. We're going to go ahead and automate this. So for the get, we know our status could be, should be 200. So there is a shortcut one, like snippet. You can go ahead and click one call uh, status code. So this one is going to verify whether you have 200 or not. So go ahead and write send. And go ahead. here is it. Is, is retrieving all the three uh, landlords that has been created and has one test. You had only one test cases right here that has been executed. If you go to the test tab, right, it says pass. For example, like I'm verifying whether it actually is working or not, right? So I'm going to put 201. So what it's going to do is going to go ahead and retrieve the data, but it did fail the test cases because actual versus. So this is my uh, actual response code dot code because I don't know what's going to be that output. But I do know my response code, right? It should be 201. But in this case, we failed it on purpose so to see that it actually the postman is working on that, right? So as you can see, like uh, it did fail the test cases. So pretty much like uh, let's pass it now. So we know our actual uh, expected data is 200. We don't know our actual data. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna say like actual versus expected. Make sure it's working, right? And this is nothing. Uh, when you do a test, you just gotta say tests like. Make sure T E S T S, not test, and then whatever uh, things you want to put. Just like when you do Java, like system dot out. Uh, instead the system dot out, you put like uh, your own personal message, right? So that's similar concept right here as well. So here you can see exactly what you are testing. Like for example, now I'm gonna change this one to my test case. So I'm gonna say get all landlords test. So when I run this test, I know that <coughs> I know that get landlord test has been executed and it passed out of one, right? And same thing we're gonna do for two or one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one. So here uh, we also need to verify the response code. In this time, it since it's a post, it's gonna be two or one. Okay, so it's gonna be two or one. Creating new land lord okay so now it's gonna go ahead and create a new landlord and one test cases we had and it did execute it and is did the cross check response code actual versus expected is 201 is passing your test is pretty much done so what are the second test you can do so this is one of the test cases that you wrote for this uh this uh this suite right uh this request create a new landlord so all you need to also you need to make sure like whatever the body you have like whatever the data you have make sure it's returning the same one because you need to verify that right because make sure it doesn't return something else so let's put a new value called uh, API I'm gonna put API as a first name um, that is the last name okay so if I send this request I supposed to see uh, first name is the API and the last name is a tag okay so we're gonna go ahead and automate that as well so to do that, we need to uh, snippet one of the thing called uh, response body uh, environment variable. Okay, so this is good. So, because we're uh, this is the response, right? We are going to retrieve the data. From the response body and then we're going to do a cross check right so let's say like uh, verify the first name verify the first name is uh, what's the first name supposed to be api okay so first name is api okay so this is our test right is equal to json data object reference dot what dot the first name first name where did i get the first name from from here okay is equal to two equals sign of three equals and doesn't matter is body api so we're gonna copy and paste it in here and boom so this is second test so one is like uh verifying the response for second thing we are verifying the first name same thing we can do with the last name so 
very correct that last name last name should be uh, tech so we're gonna put tech right here and we put tech right here and we're gonna change this last okay. so make sure uppercase camel case make sure it does match with the uh, the object key right here okay so now we're gonna go ahead and save this and execute this test so now as you can see I have three tests and they all three are passing now for example like I want to just fail these test cases I just want to make sure it's actually failing so inside the body I'm passing APA is the first name tech is the last name and in my test case uh, when I'm writing the test script I'm gonna say text whatever right? because I want the, my third test case to be failed so we're gonna go ahead and execute this one uh, execute this test and it went and it ran two out of three so two test cases has been passed and the third one failed because our actual the data we're looking for tech but we found we're looking for text but we found tech right if you look at the body so last time is a tech but we are looking for text uh tech so that's why this test cases has been failed okay so that's how you perform the api testing in postman and swagger manually as well as automation okay and uh in our future video we will show you how to capture this id because what uh, there will be a scenario like you need to go ahead and delete these landlords right and this id is the unique value that you because anybody can have the same similar first name and similar last name but the id is going to be every time you're going to generate uh, create a new landlord as you can see from the get request all the ids are unique right all the ID, ID is unique so we need to capture this ID whenever we create a new landlord and in order to delete this landlord so, so in our future video we are also going to show you how to do that part so for now uh, this video uh, is going to cover you how to do the get request and post request in uh, swagger as well as in postman in postman we show you how to do the manually as well as automation in swagger we show you how to do manually Alright, so uh, watch, wait for the next video and where we will uh, show you how to do the put and how to do the delete. Okay, thank you and have a nice day.